Hey guys, Obelisk here again with another installment to my Dayat class overview video series. Today we're going to be talking about shamans. We're going to be going over specs, um, what spells they get, baseline and spec line, um, some RA options, uh, maybe some tactics, template choices, things like that. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into game here. I'm on my shaman. Um, mainly been using him as a buff bot. I uh, played him years and years ago. It's been a while since I've played shaman. Right now he's probably specced more for the solo aspect. Um, he's pretty high cave, pretty high aug, um, which is a pretty cool spec for that. Um, probably not the best group spec, um, although it could be kind of useful, especially if you want to put out a little bit of damage as a shaman. Um, your heals are going to be lacking a bit um, compared to a shaman specking a bit of rejuve though. Um, but you still do get a heal on this line. We'll, we'll look at the line a little bit more. Um, first off, I'm going to go over some of the baseline spells and then we'll delve into what you get with each spec. So for now, let's pull up our spell list here. We'll start with Mending. Um, pretty basic line, especially since I have nothing in it. You get a uh, normal bigger heal, I guess, baseline bigger heal, a small baseline heal, a baseline group heal. Um, we'll throw these on. This is the baseline group heal. It's not very good. Baseline big heal, you have a target. It's not great. You probably will never really be using these spells. Um, you have a res. Um, at this level, it's 10% um, health, 0% power. And you have a cure disease and cure poison. And you'll likely be using these quite a bit. So we'll show these. This is the cure disease. It's a uh, 2.4 second cast time spell, 2000 range. Um, cure poison, same, same um, cast time range, all that good stuff. Turn on the new key real quick. All right, so those that's your mending baseline. Next, we'll go into your aug baseline. And all you get in this line are four spells. You get a base dex, base strength, a base con, and base AF. These are just standard base buffs. Um, you can use the yellow ones if you have 25 buff bonus and at least a, a good amount of aug, which you should as a shaman. So you, you should be able to cap with your yellow buffs. So um, use all your yellow buffs if you have 25 buff bonus, that is. Um, next, we'll go on to our cave baseline. And we have a baseline nuke. It's a, let's see, let's put on the bar here. Let's clear up this. It is a 1500 range, um, 2.6 second cast time, 148 delve spirit nuke. As you can see, it just looks like the standard spirit nuke. Uh, this is interesting because a lot of the cooler, um, not cooler, but a lot, like I think the better mid train, mid caster train is a spirit train with the uh, spirit master debuffing for spirit for the arms, bone dancers, um, warlocks have a spirit nuke and shamans also. Um, you're not going to be hitting for a ton of damage because you're, you don't get acuity debuff like other casters. Also, your spells delve is relatively low, whereas. Uh, like an RM's baseline spirit uh, nuke is 179, yours is 148, so it's kind of low. So my cap damage is 444 here on a level one, and that's just you know with my template and stuff, which is probably not great. Anyway, so keep that in mind. You get a baseline dot, which does a fair bit of damage. It is a 102 delve every two seconds, dot that lasts for. It doesn't say how long it lasts for. That's interesting. Uh, we will test that in a duel real quick because I'm curious. Let me accept on my other guy. Okay, it lasts about 10 seconds, 12 seconds. So that's how much that dot hits for and lasts 12 seconds. Next, you get an AOE disease. And this is really good. This is a 400 radius. Uh, 1500 unit range spell. So this is a, has a huge interrupt radius. Um, to think about it, healer's mez, AOE mez, is 350 radius. Um, Sork's yellow AOE mez is 350 radius. A Sork's red spec line AOE mez is 400 radius, just like this. So it's a huge interrupt radius. Um, and it, as you can see, the disease here um, slows the target by 15%, reduces its strength by 55, and halves its healing, reduces its healing by 50%, which is huge. Um, so disease is, is such a good form of crowd control because one, it, it's it's a slow that doesn't have immunity. 
that you can constantly reapply as a shaman um, pretty easily too. Um, it forces your your enemy's group to cure it, or their tank or caster is just going to be diseased moving slowly. Also, the the fifty percent healing reduction is massive, especially when your group is damaging the target, or if you're damaging the target as a shaman. That means it's not going to have any heals. Well, it's it's going to have. I should re rephrase that. The heals it gets are going to be reduced by fifty. Any natural regen it has or health regens are completely eliminated at this point. So it's not going to tick up in health naturally. It's gonna. The only way it can get heals are from heal over times, and actual heals. Um, so we'll show you this in action. So you can kind of see the the gnats and the the um, the mist here when I AOE disease. So this is a great way for shamans to interrupt. Anyway, we also have a baseline root. This is a 2.5 second cast time, 1500 range spell. It's a minute and 24 second root, so it's a pretty long duration CC, really fast cast time. Um, just a great way to CC someone, great way to erupt quickly, um, all that good stuff. Then we get a single target disease. Um, this is a 3.0 second cast time, so the cast time's the same as the AoE. It's just not a, uh, it's not AoE. So if you're trying not to break a lot of mezzes, if you're just trying to put a disease on someone and have it land and, you know, so say the target your casters are nuking is right beside a mez target. You don't want a AOE disease, throw a single target disease on. Um, the disease actually isn't as good because you can see here the strength only goes down by 25, whereas on the AOE disease, the strength's reduced by 55. So all in all, the AOE disease is better. So if you can AOE disease them. Also, the level of the AOE disease is higher, so it's going to have a lower resist rate. But if you need to, there's your single target disease. And then you have a damage shield. I never use damage shields because it breaks root if a tank hits you because it reflects damage back at them. So be careful with that. So that's your entire baseline. Uh, next, we're going to get into spec lines. Um, we'll, we'll start with AUG because that's one of the, that's the most interesting spec line on Shamans right now, in my opinion, because that's the line that got the most amount of new spells. Um, that's where all the cool, in my opinion, spells are. So we'll look at, we'll pull up the train menu and we'll just go to 50 AUG. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll show you what this gives you. And then some of the spells I'll, I'll show you that what I have um, trained at, I think I have 39 AUG. Yeah, so let's make sure we're not, okay. All right, so big things we get are buff shears. Um, and you likely will not be going more than, at the most, 44 AUG, but probably even lower than that. You'll probably be going something like 42 AUG in most cases. If you're a bot, you'll be going 44. And you can still RBR with your bot with that spec too, if you'd like. Um, but you'll probably be going 42 or lower AUG. 42 to 49. Sorry, 42 to 39. But we'll, we'll look at the, the higher level spells you get. You get a AOE, um, Dex Quick Debuff. And if you look at the stats on this, let me close this. Oops, there it is. Um, it's a 1500 range spell. It's a three second cast time with a 150 radius and it just shears dex quick. We'll go to the strength con AOE shear, same deal. It just shears strength con instead. Um, we'll look at the shears first, AOE shears first. You get the the base strength exactly the same as the uh, the strength con and um, dex quick AOE shear. 3.0 speed, um, 1500 radius, 100. Um, Sorry, 1500 range, 150 radius, just takes um, base con, uh, or sorry, base strength, then you have a base con shear, and you have a base deck shear. Um, base dex AOE shear, I should say. Then we'll look at the spec buffs you get. Um, the red dex quick is overkill, your yellow dex quick caps, so you'll really never need to use this unless, you're, unless you don't have enough buff bonus, but you should be able to fit that in your template pretty easily, or at least swap to like a star drop or something to get your buff bonus. Um, you get a couple of AOE buffs, and these are helpful for like PvE raids or buffing pets and things like that. Um, you'll likely be using the yellow con version of these, um, which aren't as good as these, obviously, but they're not a huge deal. You also get a group damage add, um, which is nice, I suppose, but it's not a huge deal. It's 10.0 damage, whereas the one you'll probably be using is 7.9, so it's not huge. Um, you get a single target damage add, same, same stuff. Um, it's just not a group, um, and it's yeah same. Actually, your your single target um, 
yellow one is 9.1, .1, so it's not too far off the group and the single target red one. Uh, your strength con buff. Um, now the red strength con buff does add um, does add extra con. You see, I only have. Um, let's see. Let's get myself base. Make sure I have cap buff bonus. Yep. So with cap buff bonus, all you get is one forty nine con in strength with um, uh, yellow strength con. Whereas with red strength con, you would cap. So that's that's the that's the really only the only advantage of going forty four enhanced is getting this red string con. So this is why I go on my bots generally is, is for this red string con. Um, however, with people wearing pots now and things like that in groups, it's not huge. And missing six con strings not the end of the world in a group, you get a lot more out of going lower aug. So, but anyway, that's there. Um, we have a AOE acuity debuff, and then we have the endurance. Okay, so the endurance at level forty two is good because it's it's in seven essentially um it gives you a ton of energy uh yellow endurance is fine too because i believe it gives you six um energy but if you want capped energy that's at 42 aug so that might be the spec you go is 42 aug also you get the red acuity buff which is you need because the yellow one doesn't cap this one doesn't even cap either you can't get this one cap in order to cap you have to use a charge and even then it doesn't cap um so your acuity has a big ceiling that you're not going to reach um, just with, with spec buffs. So having red acuity uh, matters. Um, but like I said, with sup pots and things like that in the game and people using item charges, if they're really wanting the max acuity, um, this isn't 100% necessary. But the 42 enhanced spec or 42 aug spec is still popular because you get red end and red um, intelligence. You also get a group um, endurance buff, group chant. Um, it just stays up all the time, so that's nice. You get your... This is, oh, sorry. I'll come back to this spell in a second because it's something that... Sorry, it's not what I thought it was. You, you get a group acuity buff um, or AOE acuity buff. Now let's go back to this. So what this does is it's an additional acuity buff, and it's a, um, it's a short duration, um, one-minute recast timer. So it lasts for 20 seconds, has a minute reuse timer. It's a 2.5-second cast time. And you use this on um, friendly people. And what this does is it buffs their piety even more. Um, remember what I was saying that acuity buffs don't cap because there's such a huge ceiling um, that you you don't even reach that cap with a, a proper acuity buff, a red acuity buff? Well, this kind of helps bridges that gap. This stacks with your normal conch-based acuity buff. Um, so you'll increase, let's see, do I have a... I don't know if I have a lower, yeah, I should, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So my acuity is 175 right now. And let's see if this works on non-mages. Yep, so now my acuity goes from 175 to um, 221, if you can see here. And once I cancel that, actually, it's, you can see it up here. It's fading in 10 seconds. We'll go ahead and cancel it. My acuity drops back to 175. So with the red one, it's going to go up even higher. If you have 43 aug, which you probably won't get, you could, but uh, you might be using the yellow one. Um, but this will really help your casters out. So like if you have a big spec nuker, like a uh, someone using a 209 nuke, or even like a dark RM using, I think it's a 219 nuke, and they get open and they want to, you want them to do a lot of damage, throw the security um, buff on them. Like I said, it's a it's a low duration 20 second buff. Um, and it has a minute reuse, so you have to be kind of selective on when and who you use it on. But this will create some some big spike damage for your group. Um, also good on things like um, shamans, thanes, anything like that. Any kind of nuker that benefits from extra piety. Uh, going down, we have this um, this 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 buff called um, spirit shell. Now this is an old buff um, or an old spell that got re. Um, I guess re reworked um, with the last shaman patch. And what this does now is it just simply reduces all damage dealt, or sorry, all damage received by 50% for 10 seconds. And it's a minute reuse, 2.5 second cast time, 1500 range, um, high power cost. You, you gotta look at all these power costs too on these short duration spells. For example, this acuity buff is 25% power. Um, now it's probably not actually gonna cost 25% power. As you can see here, it costs about 13% power when I used it. Um, this one says 25% power cost to you. Um, so 
shamans are pretty high power cost class or yeah power cost class but it's not 25 percent per spell like at the delve list um it's affected by power bull and things like that um so your spirit shell just reduces the damage taken so if you see someone get body debuffed by a cab and you know body sork and a mind sork you're about to nuke them and blow them up and they're the target maybe throw this on them um help them out get them out of a bad situation so this is a this is a great spell um there are some shaman specs that go 40 aug i don't think those are very good just because you lose this this ability uh, and i think this ability is pretty dang strong so i would definitely go at least 41 aug if it, if it were me and then our next spell is an AoE Acuity Shear. Nothing huge there. Uh, next spell at 40 Aug, very important, is your uh, Resist to Heat, Matter, and Cold. It's your 24% um, Resist um, group chant. Uh, very important. Um, if you go 39 Aug, for example, if you're a solo shaman or a, a damage-oriented shaman, you'll lose this. You'll be using the... Um, the 18% resist, which is still okay, but if you're in a group, I think this is probably necessary in my opinion, um, or else I'd, I'd really like it. So I would I would go for this. Um, other spells we missed up here is this heal over time, and this is a super, super strong spell. It's a 10 minute duration, um, 30 second recast, instant heal over time. Heals for 150 every one second. You're probably not gonna be using this one because you I doubt you're gonna go 48 AUG. Um, however, you probably are going to be using the um, the yellow one, which is um, at 38 AUG. And it's same same stuff, 10 second duration, uh, 30 second reuse timer, instant cast. But it's 100 health every one second. So that's 100 health every one second for 10 seconds. So that's 1,000 health. Really, really, really strong. Um, so, yeah, that's shamans can, they, they can take a beating um, or they can help their friends take a beating. Uh, this spell is great for solo. Um, if you're one of the solo shamans and you have a bunch of people beating on you, um, the spell will, will keep you alive. Um, so let's, let me duel myself. Duel challenge this guy. Duel accept. And we'll see how much this heals real quick. I'm not buffed on this guy, so I'm not hitting super hard. All right, we're at 35% right now. Back this guy off, and let's put this on the quick bar. And then let's see how much we heal. We're at 37%. So look, look at the help go up. Look how look how fast that goes up. That's pretty crazy. And that's the thir level 38 heal over time. In 10 seconds, I went from roughly 40% to 100%. Um, pretty good. And then it's up in, let's see, 10 more seconds. So it has only a 20 second downtime or even like 18 seconds if you have duration because these all these spells are affected by duration. So crazy stuff. Um, yeah. So that gets us to the spells we have. Um, more usable spells are things like these buff shears, um, which I don't have bound anywhere. But let's, let's buff my Mauler friend here. All right. So... Every, I, I imagine most people know what buff shears are. If you don't, we'll, we'll go through them real quick. Let's see. So we have every buff shear pretty much, except for armor factors. Um, that's pretty much it. And base decks, where's base? There it is. Okay. So these buff shears are really good because, as you can see here, they're two second cast time. They're super fast cast time, 1500 range. So these are great interrupts. Even if the person's... Hell, even if the person's a cleric and you just need to get a super fast rupt, you have a two second spell you can cast on. It's not gonna shear them if they have their own buffs up, if they're a cleric or a druid, um, if they have um, yellow or red buffs up, but it will interrupt them regardless. Um, now, a lot of people use subpots in RVR um, and subpots are getting expensive now and the subpots have a 30 second reuse timer. So if you can just keep shearing and keep making them pop subpots, and then make them pop another sub pot. It's gonna one. It's probably gonna tilt them because they're having to spend all this money. Uh, sub pots like maybe like a what, five hundred gold a charge almost <laughs> at the going rates. So you're making them spend a bunch of money, um, and they might not be able to keep up with your shears because there's a thirty second reuse on the sub pot. And if you don't know what sub pot is, it's Drought of Supremacy. It's a fully it's a full buff potion, um, but those are shearable. Um, but anyway, shears are great. They're just super fast cast rupts. 
um, and it just it cheers your opponent, so that's frustrating. And plus, if they're a group that's rebuffing with their clerics and stuff, it clutters communications because they have to ask for the buff. Hey, I need dex quick on I hate this race. And then if someone else is calling for damage and assist or anything like that, it's just, it's a pain in the ass. What is this? Anyway. So I'm trying to figure out what this red dot is. If you can see that on the top left of my screen. Oh, well. Anyway, so next we got the buff shears. Um, we have dex quick, strength con, base dex, base con, and base strength. Uh, pretty pretty simple once you understand buff shears. Um, we have our yellow buffs, yellow dex quick caps. As you can see here, I'm using yellow dex quick and yellow base dex. I have 155 from buffs, so those cap. Um, we have a, a damage add, a single target damage add that is 9.1, pretty good. Our endurance, our yellow endurance is nice because it's um, endurance six. If you remember um, years ago, red endurance used to be endurance five and that would allow you to permanently perma sprint without long win or anything like that. This is this new yellow endurance is even better than the old red endurance. So you're still getting a ton of energy, just not quite as much as you did or with you do with red endurance. But this is this is plenty sufficient. Especially if your tanks are running um freezing king myths which have 3 end on them like it's it's fine. This is plenty enough end. So you can get away with yellow endurance and not going 40 to og um, other things we get, we get the yellow acuity buff, which doesn't cap, um, but it's it's okay. You'll probably, if you're if you're a caster running with a shaman with this, if you die or get sheared, probably pop this up while you use a charge because you'll get a lot more acuity. Um, but anyway, it's there if you need it. Um, your resist you get if you don't go 40 aug are these 18% heat cold matter um, resists, which we talked about earlier, um, which. How do we put those on? Let's see. Let's put them on Mars. Turn them on. What this is is just like a chant. So it's a pulsing 30 second buff. If someone dies, I always recast them because I, I believe it bugs out. I can't remember, so don't quote me on that. Um, anyway, we have a couple more cool buffs that we can talk about. And I, I totally overlooked them as we were talking about cheers and stuff. So we'll go ahead and get back to those. We'll, we'll go up to the top and talk about this. Um, caustic care let's see where is it caustic carapace now what this does this is really interesting this is a a super damage shield pretty much like a damage shield on like on crack pretty much it's a 15 second buff short term buff um and it, the recast on it's one minute so it's a castable one so it's a three second cast time what this does is it reflects 200 percent of the damage back to the target dealing it for melee damage, not casted damage, just strictly melee damage. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to buff my Mauler friend. And just let's see how this does. All right. What my Mauler friend is going to do is he's going to come up here and he's going to try to hit me. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cast this on myself. You can cast this on other people too but you can also cast it on yourself if you can cast it before they get on you. It, it is interruptible. So you can mock it and put it on yourself if you have a bunch of people on you, but just just look what happens. I'm gonna target my Mauler. So you see that. So you can see my Mauler's help going down, maybe not. Okay, maybe it's bugged in duels. Why is it bugged? Thorns. Well, what I wanted to show you is it working, but apparently it might be bugged, so that's cool. Um, I'm going to log on a different character and see if I can show you. That's bizarre. I swear it's worked in a duel before. Anyway, if you've seen um, any of, if, 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 you've, if you've instant died on the tank to hitting someone and you don't know what the heck happened, it's probably from this. Um, it's it's a ridiculous spell and it, it it can really fool people um it's all about seeing it and then pulling off immediately if you're um say like i'm a uh, i'm a melee necro hitting a shaman and i see where i'm a melee necro hitting an rm and i see this buff come up and i'll show you what the buff looks like again 
it's like a Icar of the Deep effect, sort of. If I see that happen on my target I'm hitting, the RM I'm hitting, I'm going to pull off immediately because if I hit that guy for like 900, it's going to do probably 2k damage to me. I know it says by 200%, but for my calculations when I've hit the shield before, it does about 250%. The, uh, the delve seems to be a little off. So let me see if I can, let me just log in my Shadow Blade and see if it works with that type of damage. I don't know why it didn't work there. Um, sorry about the, the delay. But normally it does work. Oh well. Shadow Blade's almost done, so we'll, uh, we'll test it out real quick. Dual challenge. Dual accept. All right. So, let's stop on my bar. Let's see if this works. Oh, well, we have one second. There we go. Okay, apparently it's bugged in duels. Um, I don't know if the spell is bugged overall right now or if it's just in duels. So, hopefully it's working because uh, that would be sad if it's not. Anyway, without me being able to show you, that's what it does. And sorry, I can't show you, apparently. Anyway, we'll move on to the next spell. Anyway, that's that's one of the the, the cooler um, cave spells because you can you can literally kill an entire tank drain um, with this if they if they aren't paying attention. Just think of like Smack is running up to you with his tank drain, not realizing that you did the damage shield on you know your healer or something, and they're just being on them while you're healing the healer, and then they all die because they don't realize what's happening and they don't pull off. Anyway, moving on. Next we have this Frig Superior Grace, and what this does is it, um, you cast it on a target. So I would cast it on, say I wanted to heal my Shadow Blade. And anyone that heals that person, the heals are 50% more effective. So this helps your healer heal the, the SB or your RM, whoever, for more. It helps your Valkyrie heal them for more, your Warlock, yourself. Um, what we're gonna do is we're going to, let's see, let's just put this right here. And then I should have, I think these are, yep. Yeah. I'm going to dot this guy for a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heal him. And so my heal heals for 376. So that's my standard heal. So I'm going to dot him some more. I don't remember what all my, let's see. So what was it? How much did he heal for? 376 was my base heal. So now once I cast this on him, oops, wrong button. My heals are now 563. So it's a pretty big heal boost. And could imagine like an AUG healer sitting back there healing for like a thousand or 900 base and he's gonna be healing for 1400. Um, so if a target's taking a ton of damage, throw this on him and they should live if they get some heals. Um, so it's a great ability. It's a uh, two second cast time, so it's a really fast cast. You see it there? It's a 15 second reuse, so it's not even that much. And it's a 45 second duration buff. So what you can do if you know someone's gonna take damage, say we have a Zerker and a, um, a Savage in her group. Those are the only two tanks and they're pushing pretty hard. I might on ink, um, or as soon as like the Savage or the Zerker goes in, throw this on the Zerker, even if he's not taking damage, because it's going to be up for 45 seconds, and it's only a 15 second reuse. And then in 15 seconds, I might throw this buff on the Pack Healer or the, the Savage, um, and then just rotate around those three, just because at any time those guys could be taking damage. This is a, a pretty long duration buff, and it's such a short reuse timer that you can kind of, you know, throw it on people before they need it and still be fine. So think about doing that on with this spell. It's really, really good. Um, or if a caster, you know, you're, you're fighting a group with a bunch of tanks, like a tank train, you can throw it on a caster that is likely to be the target, maybe throw it on the SM, and then 15 seconds, throw it on your RM. And so that way those these guys already have this heal boost on them. Other spells we have are, let's see, there's a ton of new ones, so like I don't want to miss anything. And I'm not super comfortable on Shaman, so there might be a few that I forget about. Yes, here we go. This is like a single target Bane Spike, essentially. What this does is it increases um, melee damage on a certain target by 35%. Um, so pretty good. What we'll do is we'll have my SB 
Just hit me for a little bit. Let me buff him up, actually. Just put a few offensive buffs on him. Okay, so I'm hitting for about 250 base. 230. 270 there. And about 300 there base. I got some crits, but... All right, let's heal up. Okay, so this, and then let's see. Let's cast, where are we at? Let's cast this damage boost. And this damage boost is a 10-second uh, duration, 30-second reuse timer. So use it when your target's about to really do a lot of damage. And, of course, it bugs out. Sorry, I have to redo the tool. <laughs> Sorry about that. The duel got canceled for some reason. So we're not going to be able to show that immediately. Duel accepts. Okay. Let me just wait 10 seconds, and then... We'll, we'll show it. It's a 1500 range spell, 2.3 second cast time. So it's not the fastest cast in the world, um, but it is very strong. If you if you use this on like a like a savage or a berserker, I don't know if this stacks with the savage buff actually, but if you use this on a berserker or something like that, and it vendos, it's going to absolutely decimate the target. Use it on a warrior or whatever. Anyway, let's let's try it on this guy. So I'm hitting for 280 base now. I'm not buffed actually. Let me quickly cast boss going. All right, 330, 340. That was the only full buff hit I had was 340. So that's a lot more than I was hitting for earlier. And we can test this again later. I just totally forgot to put normal buffs on my SP, which is my bad. Um, let's see, one second. Sorry. Um, I think that's pretty much all the AUG buffs we get. There's there's a lot of cool buffs. So the 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 added if you, if you're used to shaman and you're looking um, trying to figure out what all the new buffs are, we'll go through and make a little list real quick. This heal over time, which is probably like I said, be using the yellow one. Sorry, one second. Sorry, so we have this heal over time, which like I said, you'll probably be using the yellow one. You have, let's see, this acuity buff. My goodness, sorry. This acuity buff, which will help your casters nuke harder. You have a revamp shell, which will reduce, oops, reduce damage taken by 50% on whoever you're targeting. And we have this, Damage shield um, returns 200% health or 200% damage back to whoever is dealing damage, melee damage to whoever has this target. Sorry, I'm anyway. Sorry, people keep texting me. Um, returns damage back to whoever is doing damage to the target, and then this 50% heal buff. Then we have this 35% damage increase for your meleeers. So those are pretty much all of the new um, shaman buffs in the AUG line. Um, there are some in AUG, and we'll get to those. Um, yeah, or some, mostly in AUG, they're debuffs. Um, this is with a more offensive line. So all of these you cast on your friends. All of these you'll cast on enemies, barring like D-Root or something. So first off, let's look at um, just what we get at 50 cave. And sorry if I'm misspeaking. Sorry I'm a little distracted right now I should probably just ignore my phone but oh well so 50 cave I actually have no clue that this spell existed so I'm gonna have to read it and let you guys know let's see so what this does is 10 minute reuse 10 second duration um, you wrap yourself in endless blight and become immune to everything all damage um, targets within 250 radius of you become disease and lose 50% endurance Take 50 matter damage every two seconds. You slowly regenerate 15% of your maximum health. Inflicts disease on targets. Um, it slows by 50%. Wow, it's a really good disease. Uh, reduces strength by 100 and inhibits healing by 50%. This is pretty decent. It's not. This is this is good when you're like you died at a bunch of people and you have a bunch of people on you and you just need to stay alive. Also does a little damage. Inflicts a really good disease and heals you a bit. Um, 
it's a pretty it's a pretty good spell. Um, I doubt anyone's really going to get it since it's a 50 cave. And I think the aug line, you get so many good things at like the mid-level 30s and higher level 30s of aug that you can't really afford to go for this. But um, hey, it is what it is. If you, if you want it, it's there. Um, you get some heals in the cave line. This is a group heal. Um, it's it's pretty decent. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna be better than your your let's see yeah your mending group heals better, but this also reduces all damage taken by ten percent for the next ten seconds. So it does have some mitigation in it. In it. Um, but keep in mind this is only a fifteen hundred range group heal. Uh, so it's it's not a huge range. Um, I think the normal group heals are two thousand range. A uh, two and a half second cast time, so it's pretty quick. And a 205 heal, so it's pretty nice. Um, you also get this, um, it's a debuff. Um, it increases power cost by 100%. So this is this is going to be really good to use on high power cost casters, um, or any caster really, but especially ones that have high power cost. Um, is it just doubles their ca um, power cost. Uh, it's a 30 second duration debuff. Um, it's a 30 second reuse, 3 second cast time. Um, and a high power cost to you as well. This is a same thing, um, except for, for endurance. So it's gonna double the endurance cost. It's a one minute duration, so it's gonna last quite a lot longer than the uh, the the power increase, 2.2 second cast time, 30 second reuse. So you can have this on two targets at once, um, pretty much over 100% uptime. Um, this is good because it's good for targets like um, things that use Battlemaster styles, which are high endurance cost. Things like Necromancers, which have high endurance costs, like the the pain working Necromancers. Anything that has a high end cost, this is gonna this is gonna affect. Um, it also affects phase shift, which phase shift costs I think forty percent, fifty percent endurance. So if you see like a minstrel that has been using a lot of his endurance, like maybe you hit him with this debuff and he's like melee styling and he's using a lot of endurance, and then maybe he won't have enough endurance to phase shift. Or if, say, your savage or warrior is, is endurance leaking someone, and then you hit them with this, they're not gonna have enough endurance to phase shift likely. So things like that are pretty cool. At 47 um, cave, you get this instant PBOE disease, uh, six second reuse, one minute duration. Um, you probably won't have this much cave, but there are lower level versions of this. But it's a great instant disease, a great PBAE interrupt, um, quick way to apply disease. It can self a good way to self peel things like that. You can cast this disease on someone and then sprint away pretty quickly if they're not snaring you or if you're not diseased yourself. Um, pretty strong. This is a single target heal. Uh, it's 302 delve. Um, it also um, cures your near sights, your silences, your disease, your poisons, and stunts. So. This is pretty strong, actually. Um, I don't know how the stun cure works, honestly, because I've never used it in action. Um, and only this version has it, only the higher level. The lower level version only has the disease, silence, near sight, poison cure. However, the level 46 one has a stun cure. So if you want, you might can figure out how to fit this into your spec, and it could be a cool way to cure your um, realm mates of stun. It's the only stun cure that I know of besides purge obviously um let's see this is a aoe root um 2.5 second cast time 1500 range uh one minute 13 duration root uh, it's a great way to interrupt and get some some aoe cc good control ability uh, this is your aoe dot and this is going to do a lot of damage um if you're spec high enough um while i'm i need to quickly look at something because i can't remember which one second, guys. There's a uh, the shaman set, the cursed set. If you use all three pieces, I believe it increases your. I don't know if it's your baseline dot or if it's your, oops, or your spec line dots. It increases the frequency down from two seconds, which this is a, a frequency of two seconds, but it increases the frequency, or I, sh I should say, decreases the frequency to 1.1 second, it's effectively doubling the dots damage. Um, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head real quick if it's for the AOE dot or the single target dot. Let me let me check that real quick. And I will let you know. 
Oh, loading up a guide to look at housing. Anyway, um, let me port my guide to the entrance. To figure out what the shaman set is called. Sorry, this is taking a second, but this is uh, something I should have looked up before I started the video, but I didn't because why would I do that? Chain. All right, guys, one second. Shaman, okay. Fungal blights. Okay. So that should be your baseline. Yep, okay. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So this this stays the same, actually. This frequency stays the same, even if you have the set. But regardless, it's pretty good damage. It's um, not quite as much as your single target dot, but it does stack with your single target dot. Uh, what this does is it... Um, it's a, it's a really good debuff to put on casters, um, like enemy casters. Um, it's a 45 second reuse timer, 30 second duration buff that um, reduces their damage by 75%. Pretty strong, um, especially if you if you see maybe a, like a, a cab mock or a body sword mock to do damage or um, you know, like a, a eld or something like that, minimalist their list on them and it's going to completely not completely erase their mock but it's going to make their mock damage like completely manageable um or even if you know someone's going to get open for an extended period of time that's a spec nuker um and you want to help out your tanks or whoever's getting nuked throw this on someone it's a really good buff um at lower levels you have it's a 50 percent reduction um if you only go um 30 if you, if you go lower um, cave, and there might be even a lower version of that, I have to, I'll, I'll look at the care plane um, once we get through all the spells. But it's a, it's a really good. This is a, a good spell, even at lower levels. Um, next, we have a bolt. And it's just your standard 1875 range bolt. Um, 2.5 second cast time does 350 matter damage to the target. Um, nothing really special other than it's a, a, a way to do damage. Um, this is going to reduce melee attack damage by 50% um, at the highest level. At the yellow con level, it's 30% reduction, if you see here. But it's a 30-second uh, duration, 45-second um, reuse spell, so pretty strong, too. This is going to be an instant root, um, an instant A root at that. It's a 56-second duration, 350-radius, um, 10-minute reuse timer um, A root, so pretty good. Um, a good way to interrupt or peel off yourself if you need to. Um, do you get a lower level version of that? You get a single target route, but I'm not sure you get an AoE route. An AoE instant route, I should say. Yeah, I don't think you get an AoE instant route at lower levels. So if you want an AoE instant, it's 4D cave. And then we have lower level versions of everything. Um, yeah. Anything else here um, that we have, we have at a higher level bar this single target root and this cure disease or sorry cure root so what i'm going to do is i'm going to look at the single target root um it's a 46 second instant root um five minute reuse timer instant cast so it's a great way to self peel as well or a, a good quick interrupt um instant interrupts from range 1500 range so it's a it's a full full range instant interrupts um if you go high enough cave you get both so it's not like you lose this one so you have two instant cc's um, you also, at level 16 cave, get a, um, a D root, a, a root cure that you can't use on yourself, but you can use it on your friends. It's a five minute reuse timer, uh, 1500 range. So it's, a, it's the only D root mid to get outside of uh, a warrior's bolstering Valkyrie or whatever it's called, the uh, group purge. So that's pretty much it for um, cave. We'll go into specs here in a second and I'll talk about, you know, what kind of combinations you can get, but we'll need to go over mending real quick first. Um, mending line's pretty, pretty simple. You get a greater heal at various levels, which is your big fast casting heal. Um, you're not gonna, your, your cave heal is not gonna get anywhere close to this. Um, you know, even the, like the heals you'll probably be using are the 23, which is a 314 delve heal. Whereas the uh, level 36 cave heal is only 241. In fact, the highest level cave heal is like just over 300. Yeah, 302. So the level 23 greater heal is 314. So this is always going to be your highest uh, value heal. Um, 
and also at level, let's see, when does it become 2000 radius? It's always 2000 ra range, sorry, not radius. So it's, it's 2000 range, whereas your cave heals are only 1500 range, if you see here. If I can right click it, there we go. So this is gonna be your best heal. Um, it doesn't have the cure disease in your site, whatever attached to it, but it heals for a lot more. Um, other spells you get in these lines, let's see, let's go back up here. You get a good group heal at various levels, um, pretty high value. You get a group heal over time, um, a really strong heal over time, or health regen, I should say that. It's not a heal over time, but um, so you can throw this up, it's 20 second re or 20 second duration, no reuse timer. Um, it's not as good as a heal over time, like your um, cave heal over time, single target, but it is a nice health regen. You get this um, single target, I believe, yes, yeah, single target, um, casted um, health regen as well. So that's that's nice. Um, you're never going to be going more than, I, I, I seriously doubt you'll go more than 33 um, rejuve on any shaman spec. Maybe even 31 rejuve is probably the highest you'll go. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you get, just various levels of those. You get a cure near site too, I believe. Maybe not. Yeah, I guess you don't. I thought you did, but you get a res at level 15. You get a 30% res, 30% health res with 10% power. You do get a cure in your site, but you'll probably be using perfect or cure in your site because um, this is just slow cast time. You don't get a higher level one, I don't think. Anyway, let's look at some specs. So, for example, let's look at the spec I am, which might be, if you're a offensive shaman, this might be something you enjoy if you like dotting people. So with this spec, what you'll need to do is use the full entire, or the whole uh, curse gear set. Um, and I think it's the, uh, I'll tell you in one second. It is chest piece, legs and arms. So it's the Drekolv Sage Armor is the, the chest piece. So that's the set. So you need to use those three pieces. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take your baseline dot and it's gonna double the frequency, essentially. It's gonna take that frequency from 2.0 seconds to 1.1 seconds, effectively doubling the damage of this dot, which will make you be able to kill stuff. So with this dot and your AoE dot that I have right here, will actually be killing stuff. Um, but mainly with, or sorry, yeah, right here. Mainly with the baseline dot. That's gonna be your big source of damage. And then you can use your bolt and then your nuke to help do damage as well. You'll be keeping the target diseased all the time with your instant disease. We get one at 37. So this is your just instant PBAOE disease. See, so I was able to disease him. Um, and that with these two dots do a lot of damage plus your nukes. Um, also things you'll be doing is you'll be casting your um, damage return on yourself if you can, if you can get it off. Uh, which you can do if you have like two people on you or even one person on you is you can use mock and then cast this on yourself and they're gonna have to make a decision they're either gonna keep hitting you and likely kill themselves if they're a high melee damage character um, or they're gonna have to pull off and probably interrupt you with seal abilities um, but you should be able to outrupt it if you're close because you can use this PBOE disease to interrupt every six seconds and then you can start casting your dots um, so it gets, it, it's a way to get people to stop mailing you or they die pretty much. And you can also cast this if you, if like say you're shoot, um, you know, dying someone and then he runs up on you real quick and then you just throw it on yourself right before he hits you, then he's, he's got to make a choice of hitting you or not. Um, and if he hits you, he's probably going to die. Um, other things you can do, you can heal, hit your heal over time on yourself all the time and that's going to keep you alive quite a bit. Um. And yeah, if you're mocked and having to heal yourself, you can throw this um, this heal boost on yourself as well. And then you can just spam heal away. And even if you're mocked and your heals are lower value, you're still getting affected by this 50% heal buff. So that's really nice. Um, other ways, other things you can do um, to kill things, you can shear them. Um, they'll debuff their damage quite a bit. And take away some constitution. Um, that's a lot of hit points. And if they have to keep popping sub pots, you can keep shearing and make them frustrated or, you know, make them um, have to pop a pop sub pot every 30 seconds. 
and then you just you kill them with your cave stuff your your dots your nukes um you know, disease and things like that you debuff their melee um with this uh, degenerate arms and if they're a caster you nerf their their spell damage or if they're a hybrid you you hit both of them on them let's see i don't know if these two share the same reuse timer let's let's check it out real quick so let's put these both on the bar and nope the you can use these both they have separate use timers and then you can hit them with this uh the end drain let me find where that is here's the power one and there's the end one oops so this makes the target do um, a lot more endurance 50 percent more endurance and this makes the target use 50 percent more power so if they're you know, hybrid hit them with both. If they're just a, a regular old tank, hit them with the endurance one. Uh, there's a lot of cool things you can do with the spec. Um, also, if you want, you can lower your aug, increase your um, your cave if you want. But I think that you get the heal over time at 38. So you, I think you at least need to go 38 aug because that's what gives you your survivability with people being on you is this, this heal over time. So maybe think about um, at least going for 38 aug. And then you can go the rest cave. At this point, mending is not super important because you have your cave heal, which also cures your disease and poison and stuff like that. And it's a pretty decent heal. Um, let's buff this guy up real quick and we'll see how much it heals for. So this is gonna heal for without my without my buff, my heal buff. It's gonna heal for oops. 376. So that's a decent heal. And then cast the heal buff on myself and just can heal for the like mid 500s. Other specs we can go. Let's, um, let me pull up this care plan real quick. Okay, oh, this isn't going to work. Sorry, guys, one second. Let me try to get this. Well, care plan's not working. Let's create one second, guys, and I'll... There we go. All right, care plan. All right, so what I would do as a group shaman, probably, is go something like... Let's see, let me see what we can do here. I would probably go this spec. Would I? Yeah. Okay. I might consider going something like this. If you can see on the screen, um, let me get this out of the way. It might be kind of hard to see. I can try to zoom in probably around 23 mending and what that's going to do is going to give you your level 23 greater heal so it's an okay greater heal it's not the best but it's not the level 31 one but you're gonna have to give up quite a bit to get that so you can go this back you can get your um your decent uh, i guess this is your green con greater heal you can go 42 aug and that gets you your acuity buff your n7 it gets you your red resist um Gets you um, all your buff shears, things like that. Um, yeah, it doesn't get you the red acuity temporary buff, like the extra party buff. But it does. You, you do get um, the the level twenty three one, and you can probably, if you, if you'd rather have a higher level acuity buff, you can drop these debuffs. You can drop your um, cave down a little bit to. Um, 21 and you'll lose the uh, the third magic debuff which you go from 10% um, less magic damage on whoever you're targeting to 25 less magic damage for essentially 32 extra piety for your friends so it's up to you um, either way it's, it's a good option and then you can either go 23 um, cave or 21 cave depending if you want that extra acuity buff um, both are both would be fine if you go 21 cave 
you can actually go f um, 44, um, 44 AUG and get that red string con. So that's a decent option too. So you can either go this spec, which is 23 min, 44 AUG, uh, 21 um, subterranean, which is cave. It gets you your um, a, the, your green instant disease, which might resist every now and then. Um, you'll lose your yellow um, instant disease or blue yellow blue instant disease, I should say. But you do get a lot in AUG and a decent amount in mending. Also, what you could do is you could, if you don't want um, red intelligence or red endurance, you can drop that down. You can even drop your healing down a little bit. And you can go for the level 27. Let's see. Is this right? Let me make sure I'm getting the spec right. Is this the greater? No, this is the greater. You can go something like this. I'm, I'm not too crazy about the spec, um, just because I like to be able to heal on Shaman and this kind of nursery healing a bit. You're only using the uh, like the level 17 greater heal, and all, and you also lose your acuity, your endurance. Um, but what you do get is a higher level instant disease, so it won't resist as much, and you get a better um, caster debuff, or sorry, a better tank debuff. So tanks will be doing 30% less damage instead of 20% less damage, and it locks in that 25% less caster damage too. But I think my favorite group spec might be something like. And this might be completely wrong to some shamans, but it's just my personal opinion. I think I like this. 23 men, 44 AUG, and 21 subterranean. Um, that's that's my preference. Um, th there's a lot of different specs you can go on shaman, it's all up to you. But for now, I think we're gonna get back into game. Um, and you can take the knowledge that you gained in this video and choose your own spec or use one of my recommended ones. And we'll talk about templates. Um, first off, um, we'll look at the Shaman Loyalty Cloak and the charges it has. It has a group heal over time, 2000 radius. It only lasts for four seconds, but it ticks every second, so one second frequency, and it heals for 200 per tick. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, duel my Shadow Bleed again, have it do some damage to me. and see how much this hot heals for. So let's see. Let's just get some damage going. Get myself pretty low. All right, so I'm at 36% health. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to just throw this up. We're at 32%, let's use it. And it's gone. So we gained about 33% health in that four second time. It's pretty decent. It's a, uh, you know, this is for your group as well. So this isn't just you. Um, for solo, it's pretty good because it gives you the option to use this and get essentially 33% health back. Um, that combined with your other heal over time. And let's, let's look at that again too. See how much that heals us for. So we're at 32% now. We use our yellow heal over time. And then in 10 seconds, we're at, remember we're at like what, 33? And now we are at 81. So it's a roughly 50% heal, so pretty good. That combined with your cloak, you're at 80% health um, return. Also, if you don't want to use that, you have this um, reactive proc. It's a 10 minute duration defensive proc that procs a disease on whoever hits you. I don't know the proc rate on this, so I'd have to check later, but this is pretty good too. So you have both of these options. So if you're a solo shaman, I'd probably recommend this. For a group shaman, um, if you can fit it, it's good. It's got uh, pretty decent stats anyway. It's got dex over cap, arcane siphon, you know, some pretty usable stats for a shaman. So I might look at fitting this. If you're a solo or damage oriented shaman, you definitely need the curse set because that's gonna increase your baseline dots damage by double almost. Um, so look at using that. Use, you're, you're gonna want, if you're if you're in the, if you buff a lot, um, you want to have at least 25% uh, buff bonus. Uh, that buff bonus is gonna affect your acuity buff too, your short-term acuity buff. So 
that's going to help there too. So put some buff bonus in the template. Definitely want duration for your roots and all your buffs. All your buffs are affected by duration. So the more duration you have, the longer those things last. Um, and even a couple more seconds helps. Um, other things you might want, um, conversion is good because it's going to give you uh, more survivability, more power regen, things like that when you're getting hit. Um, power regen from Infernal Seas or um, the Otherworldly Piercing Gem, things like that are good. Arcane Siphon's nice because it's going to allow you not to use power, give you a chance not to use power. Um, I like, um, if you want to, you can use the, I think it's the Dark Dragon Locket, if I'm not mistaken. That's one of the cursed necklaces that gives you a temporary speed boost, in combat speed boost. Um, helps you get away if you need to. Um, put in a melee resist charge, a magic resist charge if you can. Um, my shaman's not in a real template, so I don't have those, but um, those will be very useful. Um, if you can, um, winged helms, nice. If you can fit it, gives you that 75% uh, style uh, damage absorption. And yeah, there's there's a lot of things um, that you can put in a shaman template, but those are probably the big ones. Um, heal bonus, things like that. If you're going for spell, if you if you want to be a damage shaman, you need resist pierce, spell damage, things like that as well. Um, you want to get as much dex as you can, con hits, survivability for group shaman. For damage shaman, obviously get some piety in there for extra damage. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. As far as strategies go, um, in a group, what you're doing is you're buffing, you know, you have so many different buffs you can cast on people, so you're, you're going to be spending a lot of time buffing when you're open, as in throwing the QD to buff on a caster that can use it at the time. You don't want to blindly throw that on someone. If someone's locked down or there's not like a, a resisty buff cast on someone, there's really no point and using that acuity buff um, unless your your casters are going for damage at that moment. So oops, save that um, until the opportunity presents itself. Same thing with the, uh, the melee damage buff. Um, use that when you know your tank has a chance of killing someone. If he had a little extra damage, help him out there. Um, as I was mentioning earlier about your heal buff, um, it's a 45 second duration, 15 second review, so you can put this on multiple targets. You can put it on the targets before they need it, and it'll stay up for 45 seconds, plus whatever duration you have in your template. So maybe cycle that around. Um, keep keep a timer in your head. Like, okay, I um, heal buff the, the Zerker. Now I need to heal buff the Savage, and then I'll do the healer next. And then I need to redo the Zerker, you know, redo the Savage, and make sure whoever needs it has it on him at the time, but you can also keep it on people, you know, kind of in a, a cycle while the fight's happening. You have your debuffs, like your, your damage debuffs and things like that, your melee damage and magic damage debuffs you can throw out. You got a ton of shears you can use. Um, you'll make sure things are diseased. Um, that's really important. Disease is such a strong ability. Um, and keep using your PBAOE disease, instant disease, and your casted AOE disease as an interrupt as well. Keep enemy tanks disease, enemy casters diseased if you can. Um, your root is good. Um, root out casters, especially if you're pulling for some reason. Or even if you're pushing and you can root out um, like a Friar or a Sork, and that is going to make the group stop pulling because um, they're one of their squishies got caught. So I mean, if they don't stop pulling, then that guy's probably going to die because they're leaving him behind. Um, other than that, that's that's pretty much shamans. Um, you can, I guess I need to go over Perfector. You have um, Cure Disease, Group Cure Disease. We'll throw that on the bar. And then we have Cure Near Sight, Single Target Cure Near Sight. You'll be doing some of the cures um, because you're going to be the only group cure disease. Um, but your odd healer might be covering a lot of the cure near sites, but get them when you can. Help out help out with disease cures, um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you're, you're, you're very busy on Shaman. There's always something you can be doing. Um, looking at RAs real quick um, while we're there. Your rank 5 is another heal over time for your group. 15% um, health every 2 seconds for 20 seconds. Um, that's health, endurance, and power. It's a try heal so... As a group shaman and a solo shaman, you have a ton of self-regen, um, like heal over time, self-regen between your rank five, your aug heal over time, and your, your cloak charge if you have it. So lots of survivability there. Um, you probably want 398 decks if you can, if you can get it. Um, you'll have to get a lot of aug or plus decks in your template and a decent amount of aug decks. Um, I don't know exactly how much aug decks you'll need to get 398. It's just depending on your template. Um, so definitely look at getting that. That's going to help you with a lot of your spells. 
Um, things like purge are good. Obviously, like get purge two or three, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, vehement renewal is really good. That's a group instant um, heal. It doesn't affect yourself, it affects your group. It's just an extra group heal, more sustained for your group. Icar of the Deep is very important because it allows you to erase root immunity with this. So what you can do is you can root a vamp, for example, and if it purges or if it comes out of the root naturally, you can hit him with an Icar of the Deep. It's going to root him for 10 seconds, but then it's going to not have root immunity at all. So you can go back with a normal long duration root and you're in again. Uh, very strong. Mock is great on group shaman, solo shaman, anything like that, because it's going to allow you to do what you need to do. Um, Solo Shaman, like I said, you can mock and put your damage reflect on yourself, heal yourself, things like that. Uh, mock heals with the um, heal buff work really well because you lose some of your value if you're mocked, but you gain some of it back with the heal buff. Um, so you're healing yourself for hopefully around um, what you would normally do without mock. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Purge. Yeah, that's pretty much it for RAs. Um, get some Og decks. Master of Focus is good for your offensive spells. Your Shears are going to need some uh, Master of Focus. If you're a Cave Shaman dotting people, your dots are probably in the yellow range, like your AoE dot and things like that. So you want to get a few points of Master of Focus. Wild Healing is going to allow your heals to crit, so maybe get Wild Healing 1. And then AOM, if you want to be tankier to magic damage in a group, is good. Um, lots of things, but... Um, yeah, the main thing is just to be very annoying on a shaman and then help your group with your buffs. There's always something to do on the shaman, whether it be rupt or toss a buff out here or there. Um, shaman bars are probably pretty complicated because you have so many spells, but it's a uh, fun and complicated class. Um, sorry that took so long. It's a, it's a class that I don't know a ton about, at least the new shaman. So I was kind of learning as, as we went as well. So um, if I missed anything, throw it in the comments and I'll make a note of it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, throw them in the comments too. Um, that was the Shaman class. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you all later.